to sleep or not to sleep? That is the question. Unfortunately, I can't give you the answer. Many words have been written, but there are no randomized or for that matter unrandomized studies providing a clear response, and the simplicity of the question is elusive. In reality, we are dealing with several questions. The brain is a complex organ, and DBS a complex procedure with many variations. A sleep or awake DBS is done for a number of conditions in a number of different targets that can be identified directly or based on an atlas, and further refined and verified using different techniques. There are many possible combinations and the current literature is not providing a comparison of equal entities, not even of apples and pears, but rather a fruit salad. However, we can pick the cherries from this and weigh the advantages and disadvantages of awake versus asleep surgery. With atlas-based targeting, macrostimulation or microelectrode recording were indispensable. Today, image-based targeting and verification has reduced their importance so much that perhaps we can disperse with them altogether, thus escaping the need to keep the patient awake. These techniques have some negative consequences that we also need to bring into the equation. Interoperative stimulation will prolong the procedure, and the same is true to a higher degree regarding MER, and a prolonged procedure is likely to increase the risk for infections as well as of CSF leakage with brain shift, which might decrease the accuracy of the electrode placements. Leakage is enhanced by large dura openings for the 6 mm array of electrodes, for which it can be challenging to find a safe trajectory. It is true that the microelectrodes are thin, but this is not the case regarding the guide tubes which are introduced close to the target. The introduction of several guide tubes will lead to more tissue damage in the central parts of the brain and is likely to have consequences such as increased risk for hemorrhages. MER is further, at least according to this study, very expensive. If we disregard interoperative evaluations, a sleep DBS as such, with longer general anesthesia, might increase the risk for postoperative pneumonia and thromboembolism. But there are many possible advantages of a sleep DBS. A sleep surgery is likely more convenient for the patient as well as for the surgeon. According to this study, patients who choose to be asleep were happy with this, as were the patients who choose to be awake. My personal impression is that a sleep TBS has reduced the stress, and some patients who previously declined surgery are now accepting. DBS has achieved a lot of positive attention in media due to its high-tech profile and results, but it is sometimes perceived as a last option, where a medieval device is screwed to the head before the surgeon drills through the skull and poke around in the brain of the poor awake patient. With the sleep DBS, no one cares about the operation technique. Further, awake DBS is not possible in all patients, such as children and some patients with dystonia. Also, for many patients with Parkinson's disease, being off medication during surgery is a suffering, and in a few almost impossible. This is not an issue with a sleep TBS, where we administer L-DOPA during the procedure. With a sleep surgery, movement artifacts are abolished, and longer MRI sequences can be used, resulting in better quality of MRI and hence possibly better targeting. A completely horizontal position is uncomfortable for the awake patient, but does not constitute a problem in general anesthesia, and this has several advantages. We need to take gravity into account. If we target a lying brain as seen on MRI, but implant the sitting brain, then there is a risk that the electrode might end up somewhat too high and too posterior. In a horizontal position, the CSF leakage is reduced compared to sitting because the brain is pressed towards the burr hole side, thus effectively sealing it. Several parts of the procedure are faster asleep, 
most importantly, the implantation of extension cable and IPG can be done directly without removing the frame as seen here, and this saves a lot of time. We have no intraoperative evaluations, and we have no tired, nervous, pain-affected patient who need to be calmed, drink, pee, change position, receive support or medication. And the <clears throat> a faster procedure might reduce infections as well as CSF leakage, pneumocephalus and brain shift, and hence lead to better accuracy. And it was in this study of 371 bilateral implantations found that in awake DBS, pneumocephalus was four times more common, the volumes four times higher, and cortical brain shift five times larger than in the sleep group. The number of high volume pneumocephalus where brain shift affecting the accuracy could be suspected constituted 34% of the awake patients, which was six times higher than in the asleep patients. So, asleep or awake DBS. All things equal, a sleep DBS is probably to be preferred, but not all things are equal. DBS is performed awake for intraoperative evaluation, which is of varying importance in different targets. A sleep DBS seems to be more common today than awake in the GPI, which can be easily visualized and where macrostimulation provides limited information. Further, many patients with dystonia can simply not be operated awake. Thus, the question today mainly concerns the subthalamic nucleus in Parkinson's disease and DBS for essential tremor. In the SDN, Macrostimulation and MER can provide valuable information, but with image-guided verified surgery, this is no longer fundamental, and more and more centers are performing STN-DBS asleep. There are no randomized studies comparing asleep and awake, but the results seem comparable according to the literature. There are two meta-analyses of STN and GPI-DBS for Parkinson's DBS. In 2017, Ho et al. reviewed studies with DBS for PD awake or asleep and found 145 studies, 139 awake with 7,700 patients and 16 asleep with almost 700 patients. They could see no difference in target error, operation time or UPDRS part 3. Asleep surgery had fewer lead passes and complications while awake had fewer treatment-related side effects. Two years later, Liu et al. reviewed specifically studies comparing awake versus asleep DBS in Parkinson's disease, and found 14 studies of 1,500 patients. They found no difference in outcome between awake and asleep regarding UPDRS part 3, operation time, or complications, but less pneumocephalus in asleep. Concerning thalamic and subthalamic DBS for essential tremor, there has been more reluctance to perform a sleep DBS. And this is regarding the VIM, understandable, since one cannot see this target. Kimber Shield has operated 102 patients asleep, but has not reported any clinical outcome data. Shen and Ponce have published two papers and did not find any differences in outcome between awake and asleep but there are several limitations in these studies. The patients were implanted awake or asleep based on personal preferences. In the first study, they had 40 awake and 17 asleep, and these patients were given a questionnaire regarding tremor ADL, and only 60% responded. And in this questionnaire, they were asked to assess their tremor status both before surgery and at present, which was 4 to 31 months after surgery. In the second study, they had the same type of uh, selection between the methods and found 40 asleep and 16 awake patients, and they used uh, the Quest quality of uh, life in essential tremor scale, and could see no differences between the groups, but thus they had no real tremor scales. In UMEO, we have done about 100 sleep procedures for essential tremor in the zone 9 CERTA. 
And when we compared our last 30 asleep procedures with the first 30 awake, we could see no significant differences in tremor reduction. But stimulation parameters and energy consumption were significantly lower in a sleep DBS. So, to conclude. DBS can be done asleep with similar results as awake. This reduces your possibilities to use intraoperative evaluation to confirm the target. A sleep DBS is heavily dependent on your ability to properly identify the target and confirm that you have reached it. And this will differ between different targets. A sleep DBS has advantages worth striving for, but should only be performed when the efficacy of the treatment can be maintained. A sleep TBS is evolving and becoming more and more common, and I have myself not performed awake TBS for more than 10 years, and my guess is that few patients will undergo awake TBS in 10 years' time. Whether or not you should do a sleep TBS today is mostly a question of how much you consider macrostimulation or MER to improve your personal results. This equation contains multiple variables, and the answer might differ between different teams. And with that, I end this presentation. If I have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here, while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme no more yielding but a dream. Thank you.